This iPod is not an Apple product. Although it looks, feels, functions, and has the exact same name as a regular iPod, it wasn't sold by Apple. That's because this is not any ordinary classic iPod. It's the product of a different time period, a period when the iPod was still a fairly new device. It's known as the iPod Plus HP. And in today's video, we're gonna be exploring the history behind this device and how it came to fruition in the first place. At the annual Consumer Electronics Show in 2004, a very unique partnership between two tech giants was announced. HP's CEO announced that the company had reached an exclusive licensing deal with Apple Computer, allowing them to sell certain Apple iPods as HP products. It was a move that took some by surprise. Since late 2003, there had been reports of HP planning to release a digital music player and a digital music store in early 2004. At the time, the company would not provide any more details. An HP spokesperson simply stated that HP will make some exciting announcements for consumers at CES 2004. So an announcement of a new music player was expected, but what wasn't expected was HP's CEO to walk out on stage with an Apple iPod. Now, the HP iPod itself was completely identical to a regular Apple iPod, with the exception of an HP logo on the back. Now, I'm sure that some of you might be asking, how on earth could this happen? This is certainly not something Apple would do today, right? Putting another company's logo on the back of their products? Well, one of the main reasons had to do with the availability of the iPod. You see, back in early 2004, the iPod was still a fairly new device. The first model was released just over two years earlier in the fall of 2001, and Apple had launched their own brand of retail stores several months before that. Apple wanted to expand their reach, and to do that, they had to be able to sell iPods in more retail stores. This is where the HP deal comes into play. HP had the ability to sell their products through more retail channels than Apple did at this time, and by partnering with HP, iPods could be sold through these retail channels as HP products and further increase iPods user base. HP was also granted the ability to sell these iPods through their own online store. This was also a way to introduce Windows users to the iPod. Since HP as a brand was commonly associated with Windows since they produced Windows-based computers, the packaging for the HP iPods made absolutely no reference to Macs or the Mac version of iTunes. The manual included in the box was also geared more towards a Windows user. However, since this is just a regular iPod with an HP logo on the back, it will work just fine with a Mac. HP even began to pre-install iTunes on some of their computers, which was also a part of this licensing deal. So essentially, each company got something out of this deal. Apple got the ability to have iPods made available through more retail channels than they had accessible to them, and HP got the exclusive right to sell these HP branded iPods through their retail channels as HP products. Now one of the more interesting facts about this arrangement is, since these iPods were sold by HP, they were technically not Apple products, meaning that Apple would not provide support for them. This is even outlined on Apple's website. Yes, even though these HP iPods are functionally identical to a regular Apple iPod, if you were to take this into an Apple store and walk up to the Genius Bar to get it serviced, you'd be turned away the moment they saw the HP logo. So, HP provided various support documentation on their website for the iPods that they sold, which is actually still accessible today. And believe it or not, HP's factory warranty that came with their iPods actually provided longer support than Apple's own warranty. While both companies provided a one-year full warranty, HP provided one year of free technical support on top of that, while Apple only offered 90 days. HP also sold an exclusive accessory known as iPod printable tattoos, which were essentially protective stickers that could be wrapped around the iPod to personalize it a bit. A pack of 10 of these tattoos sold for $14.95. 
Unfortunately for HP iPod fans, this deal only lasted for about 18 months. In July of 2005, HP announced that they were terminating the agreement with Apple. An Apple spokesperson stated that, HP has decided that reselling iPods doesn't fit with their company's current digital marketing strategy. But it appears that the reasons for HP canceling this agreement were a bit more complicated than that. In January of 2005, six months before the deal's termination, HP briefly stopped ordering iPods from Apple's warehouse. This was due to frustration over Apple's lack of offering price protection to HP. Essentially, this means that if the price of the iPod were to drop after HP had already purchased a batch of them to sell, HP would have to eat the full cost. Now, HP attempted to get Apple to offer them price protection, but this never happened. Despite this, HP resumed ordering iPods from Apple, but ultimately terminated the entire agreement a few months down the road. During the 18-month partnership, HP sold four models of iPod. The one that I have here is the first model offered, which is an iPod 4th generation 40GB, which unfortunately has a bad hard drive. HP also sold a 20GB version of this iPod. Later on, HP was given the ability to sell the iPod Mini, the iPod Photo, and even the first generation iPod Shuffle, all with an HP logo on the back. And just like the original offering, all of these were sold as HP products and could not be serviced by Apple. In Q4 of 2004, there were over 4.5 million iPods sold, but HP iPods only accounted for 7% of these sales. So it's fair to say that HP terminating this deal didn't really have that much of an effect on Apple's sales. But despite terminating the contract with Apple, HP still pre-installed iTunes on some of their machines until early 2006 when they came to an agreement to pre-install Rhapsody instead. They were also barred from creating a music player that would compete against the iPod until the summer of 2006. Overall, the Apple and HP partnership that gave birth to the HP iPod was a very unique one to say the least, and it's very likely that we won't see another one like it in the future. So that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a like and get subscribed. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.